Right, the snow has disappeared, but we're still going indoor to the Custom Fit Centre here at Hollywell Golf Club because, well, I've got two clubs in my hand, which in my opinion, change everything. Now, every year the main focus is on drivers, fairway woods, the big clubs in the bag. But every year it seems to me that a few clubs just go under the radar and I reckon these two fall into that category. And you're making a big mistake if you don't try them. The two clubs in question are from Ping and from TaylorMade. They are the DHY and the Crossover. And I'm coming indoor to collect some numbers and show you exactly why I think these two clubs are very much game changers. Now, both of these clubs are essentially what I would class as game improvement irons. It's as simple as that. If you've seen these in an iron set, you'd probably be, if you're a better player, you'd be looking at these things and perhaps staring away, particularly with the DHY, because it's a bulky club. It looks, like I said, very much like that game improvement iron. But what both of these things do is they perform very differently than they might suggest in terms of their looks visually. When I'm trying in that longer end of the bag, I'm always looking at maybe hybrids or fairway woods as being the only option I've got. Because when you get to these things, life gets a little bit difficult. But both of these options from Ping and TaylorMade are very, very different in the way they both perform. That's right out the middle. Turned it over a little bit, or turned it over a lot according to what uh, the monitor's showing me. But a carry of 196. The first thing that I notice when I go into the DHY, and I'm just waiting for it, is a launch angle, 18.6. Spin number of just under 3,000 revs. With a four iron equivalent. So first of all, 196 carry. Can I do that with my four iron? Probably not. Can I launch it that high, even if I do manage to get one out there? Again, probably not. Ball speed of 122. Right, another decent ball out to the right hand side. You certainly exaggerate your miss these screens because that didn't seem too bad. Carry distance again, 184. Let's just wait for that to come back on. 3.7 spin, 18.9 launch. I could go on in balls all day long with this thing, but what the numbers tell me just in those couple of shots is that 22 degree four iron launching the ball at near 19 degrees is an incredible number. The spin number that is obtained from these things again is probably far greater and certainly very acceptable to what I would get compared to my regular four iron. And then you compare that carry distance, which is very consistent. And again, more than comparable with what I'd expect to get from my four iron. Right, one more. That's again solid. That's gonna be a long carry. I've hit that pretty much as good as I can. It's straight, it's a 186 carry, two and a half thousand revs in terms of spin, which the one we'll look at slightly lower ball fight in 17.1 degrees. That's the next thing that I'm gonna try. Can I flight this ball down a little bit with um, an iron in hand? And does that become then a bit more of a versatile club in hand? So let's see if we can do that. So it's a type of shot that you're perhaps, if you're playing some bit of Lynx golf, you might want to keep this ball just a little bit lower. Now with a hybrid equivalent, fairway wood, that can be fairly difficult. But I'm thinking with this iron, it might be something we can achieve. Yeah, I mean, I'm much happy with that. Again, so it tells me I turned it over. I felt like a really good shot, but straight away you just see the numbers there in terms of the launch angle. You can see it in the ball flight on the screen. 13.4 degrees in terms of launch, spinning at 2.3. Obviously the carry distance changes to 172, and yet it shows it was turned over a little bit. But straight away, you see that you're able to manipulate that club head and play different shots, which is not always an option with, like I said, a hybrid equivalent. I'm quite happy with that. Now I wanna see just how this ping equivalent fares. So before I start hitting the crossover, I just want to explain these are quite different in terms of ad address and in terms of shelf appeal. And I've got to say, when I look at a crossover, they've made it a bit more compact than previous models. It perhaps suggests it's very much aimed at the better player. Now my previous tests suggest that it's a lot more forgiving than it actually looks. But like I said, you put these two clubs side by side and from a confidence perspective, most average golfers are going to be drawn towards this. 
What I'm hoping to see in this testing, and when I hit some shots very shortly, is that the looks in this are quite deceiving, and it's quite a lot more forgiving than you might expect. Oh, that's an absolute belter of a start. Um, again, turned over just a little bit, but that's 186 carry. I got a glimpse of the launch angle. It was, I think, 18, no, 19.6 almost identical to what we've just seen with that other club. So I'm slightly, I'm slightly surprised because like I said, having not hit this for a few weeks since the initial review, you look down on it and like I said, you're looking at essentially a fairly compact four iron. So you're thinking, am I gonna be able to hit this as well? I've just hit that DHY. Three, three spin, slightly better spin number on that particular strike. I was shocked when I reviewed this thing first time round because it performed far better than, like I said, I expected it to. The other thing to mention is, by comparison to the original crossover range, the sound and feel out of this thing, to me, are like chalk and cheese. This is so much better. Um, everything about this club is, um, uh, well, it is an, it's, a, it's something that you just don't expect from a four iron. They go down to a two. I'd like to play it in a two iron and just see if I could perhaps handle that as well because this thing is very, very surprising. That's an interesting one. It's definitely off the bottom groove, so let's see what this thing does. Right. I, I know from feel there that I didn't get anywhere near as much of that compared to the first shot. But 180 carry, 4-1 spin, and just under 19 degrees, 18.8 .8 launch. That to me is a much better test of this club than perhaps the first shot because a four iron equivalent looking like, oh, I mean, it's almost blade-like. I'm not getting that kind of performance with that kind of strike. No way am I gonna achieve that. So for me, that's the kind of telltale sign just as to how good these two irons have become this year. When you get them out the middle, every club is good. It's when it's not so good is when it's you're finding in and around that club face and particularly those bottom grooves. So really impressed with what it had done there in terms of performance. Right, let's see if we can go after one a little bit. Really happy with that. Again, slightly off the bottom grooves. Foresight keeps telling me I'm turning this ball over, but it doesn't feel that way, I must admit. I'm a bit disappointed in where that ball is finishing and seems to me very exaggerated, but uh, it's obviously right. But again, just looking back on the numbers, I'm looking down at the screen, you've seen them already. 185 carry, 4,000 spin, 19.5 degree launch. Just in the few shots that we've seen on camera, you'd almost say that the ping is obtaining a slightly better combination of carry, launch and spin which again, surprises me a little bit. Both of these things have got graphite shafts in. They're both lofted exactly the same, don't forget. And um, looking at the way in which the DHY is made up, I'd probably be expecting a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more spin as well achieved, and a little bit more launch from that bigger head mass, where it's actually proving that from the numbers, like I said, in a very limited look in those few shots we've hit, probably slightly better on the ping and visually you would not expect that to be the case. Right, the one final test we'll do again is just see if we can flight this one down a little bit because everything about this setup is about, about helping you get the ball airborne. But again, this type of iron is the type of club you might want to play and flight the ball down and maybe move the ball a little bit as well. But in this instance, we're going to do what we did on the previous iron uh, on the DHY and just see if we can flight one down a little bit. Again, similar sort of shot, smothered it a bit, and again over to that left-hand side, which seems to be a little bit of a nemesis, but the ball flight changed considerably, which is what we're trying to do. 14 and a half degrees of loft, of launch rather, 3-1 uh, spin, still 180 carry. I've got a feeling those numbers were very comparable to the similar sort of shot we tried to achieve with the DHY. Almost inseparable in terms of performance, what we've seen on camera here today. And I think it's very much about some personal preferences. So the overall evaluation is quite simply, don't judge a book by its cover. Because for me, particularly the pin crossover, if I took a look at that and I wasn't particularly confident in terms of my iron play, I might just veer away from it because it's not what I was expecting at all. 
And what I mean by that, it's far more forgiving, it's far more playable and more appealing to the masses. I think with the DHY, it probably breeds a little bit more confidence because of its size and bulk. The other thing that DHY offers is a little bit more options in terms of it goes to five iron. And I think this is where the next piece of advice, if you like, would be, is we've said it all year, is don't buy the traditional makeup of pitch and wedge through to four iron when you next buy your iron set. Really have a look at that top end of the bag, particularly the four iron, the five iron, perhaps even the six iron, in how or what options you've got to change those out to make that end of the game just that little bit easier because the slower your swing speed gets, the more difficult it is to obtain the performance out of those lower, stronger lofted clubs. And these things are an absolute no-brainer to substitute at that top end of the bag. So for me, I said they're a game changer and why that is because previously, in my opinion, there wasn't this style of club available for us to try that had this kind of forgiveness. They're so, so different than anything I've tried. As you know, I've got the DHYs in my bag currently, absolutely loving them, real versatile club. And I'd much prefer playing these than the current options that I've got in my long end of the bag in terms of my standard irons. So they're a great option, a real game changer. My advice would be, like I said at the beginning, don't judge a book by its cover. Go out and give them a try and see what you think and make sure you try as many options as possible in solving a real big problem, which is that long end of the bag. Right, that's me done. This one was very much data-led, inside, in the warm. The weather conditions have changed, so no doubt you'll be seeing quite a bit more of us here in the studio at Hollywell Golf Club. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.